back to the uh, garage and the channel. Um, today's mission is rebuild these swivel, swivel walls. Uh, everything's painted up, everything's been shot blasted painted. I'm probably not going to get a chance to finish this today, it's getting late on. So I'll just press these bearings in now and then uh, rebuild it up tomorrow. So we need to press this bearing, this drive shaft bearing or half shaft bearing, prop shaft bearing, whatever you want to call it into the back of the um, swivel ball. This is a Skefco bearing. Um, yeah, and it literally just slots in there. You, you probably could get away with just tapping it in with a hammer. I'm gonna use the press just because I've got it, I've paid for it, I'm using it. Um, so, yeah, I'll crack up. We also need to, um, Put in the uh, Relco bush. It's, you know, take note of which way round these go. As you see, it's it's angled. The one furthest in goes to the top. So that's where your bush goes. That's where your bearing goes. If you remember that, you can't go far wrong. Right. I'll spin you around. I'll press this bearing in quickly. Um, and I'll show you that, I've done, the other, done one side already, I'll show you that uh, what it's going to hopefully look like when I've uh, fit this side. Click, click. Right, the problem is with these um, bearings, I've pushed it in and I've pushed it in so far by hand, I can't get it back out now. If you're trying to push it in that way, because that's at an angle, you can't get it straight. So, I'll put it in that way, like that. I've put, um, this is where it takes me forever to pump it down, and I'll put that inside there and push it down that way. I'll try and lift this up, but it's going to take forever to pump that down. I'll tell you now, this press has earned its keep. Uh, Right. You probably could. I'll say this is the only complaint I've got with this press is it's, uh, it's it's good because you've got really fine adjustment on it. You can uh, you can push it down off normally, and it takes you ages like this. Uh, yeah, you probably could tap them in carefully. It's not recommended, but you you've got what you've got. Get that in. Right, we're getting there now. We're getting there. Here we are. So it's not even registering half a ton of pressure to put it in. Right. Let's not let that go all the way up. And what you'll see, you see a lip inside there. Um, I can't, it's hard to show you on the camera, so we get it on an angle. The lip just inside there, it needs to go down to that lip, so you need to push it that little bit more. Let's get a, uh, a ring around it. And... So, what I've got is an old bearing race. I don't think that's going to do it. Right, let me find the bit. I've put it down somewhere, the bit that I used to do it. That's it. It was right where I was looking. Couldn't see it for looking. So we'll get that under. Make sure it's sat on the, the outer part of the bearing. Not the actual rollers or anything itself. I haven't put that thing back in either. A little dimple bit. Oh, I'm underprepared today. Drop that in there. Oh, it takes forever. Stand at wrong angle, that looks uh, shady, doesn't it? Uh. 
Så over i den. So you need to get it so you've got that lip round there. Right, next thing, remembering that's the top. We'll put that in, let that all the way up like so. We'll get the Velcro bush. I've given up on that clicker thing now, I just press the button. Right. Just get a little squirt of WD-40, make sure all inside there is clean, clean as a whistle. And that it's sat level, as level as it's going to go. Don't take much pressure to get them in, but they need to be in square. That's it, that's it, that's that in. That's ready to be bolted onto your axle. Don't forget the gasket. I always use a bit of RTV sealant in there. And as I'm using one shot, if you're using oil in your in your swivel housings, you don't need to bother with that. But as I'm using one shot, I'll grease that up first before it goes in. Right. And the aim, sorry, skipped forward a little bit, is to get it looking like that. I've got tools everywhere. I've literally just finished this side. I've still got the um, gator to put on and the bracket for the brake pipe. Um, also, I couldn't be normal supplier for bolts is, is temporarily shut down because of COVID. So I have put the old nuts on there, but what I'll do as soon as I can get hold of some fresh ones. Uh, I thought I had a stock of them, but I haven't. Um, I'll, I'll go around, I'll swap them out one at a time and put fresh nylon nuts on the end of there. The bolts are fine, it's just the nuts that need changing. You need this bush, uh, this bush, sorry, seal, new seal in there, clean all this surface up. And uh, yeah, what I'll do is I'll I'll get that done and I'll get the, um, the ball bolted up there. You don't need to see me tightening up nuts and bolts. Right guys, I've got this on, um, I'm going to pretty much call it a day now, I'll probably just uh, put the swivel housing on, it's getting late, I'll finish this in the morning, um, it's getting dark in here, I haven't, in this part of the, the garage I haven't got decent lights on, purely because the roof leaks a bit and the electrics and all that lot, so I took it all out, um, like I said it was only meant for a temporary fix this garage. Uh, it's grease up this bearing. Oh, so I'll save well. Don't forget your gasket in there. I put a bit of RTV sealant in there. But before the most important thing, <laughs> and trust me, I've done it, is uh, make sure you put that seal and the retainer on the ball before you bolt it up. It's got to go on from that end on. You can't put it that way on, it will not go. So you've got to put, otherwise, if you don't put it on, then you've got to undo all this, take the whole thing off. And trust me, I have done it before, and uh, you only do it once. You only make the mistake once. So I'll pack this bottom grease, uh, this bottom bearing, with grease. You don't have to go stupid mental with it, because it's going to have one shot in there anyway. This is just basically... Just till the, the the one shot gets down into it. The one shot's a bit thinner, so just really pack it in there. Wheel bearings, I go to town and I really, uh, well, to give you a bit of a clue, I've done three wheel bearings and I've used half a tub of grease. So, yeah, I like to make sure things are well lubricated. Right, so try and get you in view. That, don't forget the bottom, bottom armour if you're taking it off. 
And don't forget the locking tabs for it as well. They're important. So you've got your bearing set on the bottom of there. The slots on. At least it should do. If it's going to go in right. There we go. And then with your shims, don't forget to put your thrust washer in the top in the top of there as well. Um, I'm just putting a. I've just put a, a full pack of shims in there just to just for now, and I'll um, figure out exactly what's what later. Try and line them holes up. Don't seem to line up nowhere. Come on, there we go. That's it. That just looked like they weren't lining up. And I'll put that on loose. These need the locking tabs on as well. Um, but we'll get the uh, uh, the adjustment in there first before we put the the locking tabs on. It takes it takes a bit of fiddling about to get the adjustment right. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, so that obviously your seal, your seal goes in there. The retainer holds that up. I'll get into that in the morning. It's getting late. I'm tired. I'm hungry. And it's dark. Uh, yeah, don't forget that. Cross said, don't forget that. You'll slap yourself around the face. That bearing's in there, all nicely, nicely. Before you get carried away as well, make sure you put the shaft in. Got to put it in at this stage or you'll not get it in. Come on, find your hole. Uh, well, it's in there somewhere. There we go. Make sure that goes all the way in the seats nicely. Lovely jubbly. Right, clean myself up, I'm going to get some tea. I'll see you in the morning. Right, next morning guys, I'm going to... It got a bit late last night, so I thought it was time to uh, call it a day and go and get some tea. So I'm going to set a preload on this. You need to do it before you put your um, seal on. Um, make sure you put your little thrust washer in, in the top of there. In the shims, I've put, I've put all the shims I've got in the pack on there, and we just need to tighten these down. It's a bit trial and error. I can tell you now with them. Oh, take that off. You're, go you're going to need one of these to set your preload. This is just for like, weighing your luggage and stuff like that. I can tell you now that's that needs a shim taken out before it even started. So we'll take that and back it out. If it'll come out, there we go. And you see shims you've got varying different thicknesses. So I'm gonna take them two thin shims out and see how that goes. And uh, I try and keep these videos short, but I always fail. I like to try and get as much detail in as I can. And that there's way too much resistance on that resistance on that. So, and I've only tightened up two 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 of the bolts. So we take it out again and you just keep trying just till you get it right. Take that one all the way out. Oh come on. There we go. So what have we got in there? We've got I put one more thin shim in. So I've got the thickest shim, second thickest shim. This 
literally just trial and error. It's all you can, all you can do with it until when I get it right. I'll. Uh, still too tight it, it should you shouldn't have to put any real force on it to um, if I put that on there we'll go on the furthest one you can see how much force I'm having to put on it what's that uh, four kilograms of force uh, no Nearly five kilograms of about ten pounds. So if it's too tight like that, then you need more shims in it. Sometimes you'll you tighten it down and then tighten it back up, and it loosens itself, but. Oops, it's me uh, shock absorber washer. Right, so now we've gone back to all the shims again. But what sometimes as well, what you find when you take it take it out, when you originally strip it down, keep your shims to one side because sometimes the the shims you get still isn't enough, and you need to put more in. I'll do, I'll go and get some more shims. Back in a sec. Right, when you've faffed about with it for ages, trying to get it, you need to check it. Obviously, make sure there's no play in any direction whatsoever. It should, oh, the hands are slippy. You should be able to do it with one finger. The old difference, so I'm not going to specify the amount of shims I've got in there because um, obviously. Yours might be different. You need a different amount of shims. And you get your, your little measure do for your thing. I say about two kilograms of force. You got a bit less than that if you if you want, but yeah. That's what you've got to think of as well. Is these are designed to do this and set up like this, dry, with no grease in that bottom bearing. Because these are normally oil filled, not grease. Grease actually has quite a lot of resistance to it, so that doesn't help. Put a bit of spot of grease on your your frost washer in there as well when you put it in, and you leave leave this seal off because obviously that's going to add some resistance to it as well. Um, yeah, if you're not happy, just trial and error. Make some matching shims, swap them around. That's getting lighter the more I move it now. See what it's saying. I can't see it from there. Yeah, that's just under two two kilograms of force on there, which is plenty. Like I said, you can go lighter than that if you want. I'm pretty sure that newer defenders and stuff they they recommend literally no. Um, it shouldn't take any effort to move it whatsoever, but. Right, that's that. Don't forget to put your lock tabs on there, but do that after you've set all this up so you know where everything's going to be. Um, but yeah, uh, next job. Oh, one thing I forgot. I thought I'd recorded it, but I didn't. Um, when I was putting the um, Relco bush in the top, you need to press your um, racing for the bottom bearing as well. Um, I thought I'd press record, was it? I, I hadn't, so yeah, don't forget that or you'll be uh, cursing me, cursing yourself. Right, this, um, I'm going to get some rubber gloves on in a minute. This seal, you pack that with grease before you put it on. 
absolute pack here. So I'll get some gloves on. In fact, I've got some here. Uh, I'll get gloves on and I'll get back in that. Right, now I've packed all inside there with grease. Um, and we'll just slot that in and get the retaining ring. And I know I still need to fasten on the um, bracket on the top. I'll see if I can get it around so I can see a bit more for the um, brake pipes. But it's only a case of undoing these these two uh, two bolts at the top. These are M7. I can't remember what the thread is, but off the top of my head, these are a little bit long, but they do the job perfectly fine. You can always go in there and just nip them off with the grinder later. I use the longer ones. Because um, I've got the steering gaiters to go on there as well, uh, the ball joint gaiters. Right, yeah, go around there, put all them on. Don't forget, I've just put that one in there and I didn't want to. I'll take that one back out because this one you need to put a little nut on it. If I can pick it up with my greasy fingers. When you put when you bolt in your, your your swivel ball up, don't forget you need that little tab that's there. Um, that's your your steering stop. If without that, you'll be uh, rubbing your tire, especially if you put a bigger tire on. You'll be rubbing your tires every time you go on full lock. That was sticking out roughly as a guide to start with about half an inch. And then once all you once all your uh, um all your steering's together then you can adjust it to to suit like I said different tires, tire widths and stuff like that make a, all the difference. Right. There's six round there. I'll get all them in and come back to you. Next step is obviously make sure you've got your, your shaft back in there. You need a little gasket. Uh, some people don't always use them, they just put some RTV around it, but put it the gasket, why not? Don't worry about too much of this round, round here, it's not going to do any harm if it gets in there. Um, plenty on. It helps stick the gasket in place while you while you line everything up. Yeah, don't forget to put your shaft in because if you if you forget that, you got to take the whole thing apart again. It should squirt probably 90% of this uh, RTV stuff out. And uh, in your kit, if you could, if you buy the full swivel swivel ball kit, you get uh, oh no, you don't get that seal. Sorry, you don't get that seal. Um, the stub axle seal. So yeah, you need to buy that. Again, pennies. So well, this this one. It was it was actually about three pounds from Bear Mac. So hopefully I get everything in the right order today. Line your holes up, slot that on there. And you need your uh, your back plate. One thing that a lot of people overlook is this screw there. That you see it on the back is for leveling out your brake your, your brake shoes so they're not they're not tipped I'll show you when it comes to putting the brake shoes on it's very important that to get to get your brake your braking uh, efficiency good you've got two one for each brake shoe it's really overlooked a lot of people don't even notice it and, uh, right we'll pop that on 
you can for, for ease if you want to um, fit your wheel cylinders on there as well then you've got that ring also some, something to remember lock tabs always remember your lock tabs and which way they're going to go these ones aren't very good they don't line up very well at all well, that's better lining up right let's get get this together shall we I'm pretty sure all them bolts are pretty evenly seized I don't uh, it's like they're spaced get your bolt Find your roll. It might be a bit fiddly trying to find line everything up. There we go. I could take that glove off now actually. I might make things a little bit easier. Don't tighten it all the way down because you need to get it through that uh, that lock tab. Gone off, that's why. Right, get in there. Yeah, and you go around, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them with three lock tabs. So, yeah, I'll get them done. I've got the um, wheel cylinders bolted up now, two bolts on the back, don't forget to use lock washers on them. Uh, I'll get the brake shoes on and that's where these are, uh, are needed. Because what, uh, as, as your brake shoe sits on there, like that, that, that screw in the back, as you see I've screwed that one out, so the brake disc, you might not be able to see there, I don't know if you is at an angle and what that that screw does it it adjusts it that way so you you can get the, the full brake shoe up against the up against the drum rather than just one edge of it which obviously isn't going to be as good a braking so you adjust that in and out and uh, yeah it's just it's just it's as simple as that really all right i'll spin this round let's get these uh i need the spring Spring hooks in, hooks in on the bottom, and then uh, I'm trying to get so you can see. Obviously, there's, a, there's a, a bit there that it hooks on. Try and slot that in, and then what? Well, try and get it in the slot in the in the rubber. Peel, I always peel the rubber off with these new ones. I actually usually do it before I put the pad on, uh, the, the shoe on, just so you can make sure it goes in the groove inside there. I'm sorry if I was in your way and you couldn't see what I was doing there. But yeah, slots in on the bottom there, slots in on there. I'll take that rubber off so you can you know it's slotted in the piston inside there. Spring hooks on there and it hooks on that post there. Uh, job done. That's, um, I've got 30 mil spanner here. Now what I'll, I'm not sure how, so if I adjust that out, you can feel it with your hand, what's happening is the, the pad's getting, the, the, the shoe, sorry, keep saying pad, the shoe's getting closer to the back plate and it squares it off, you want it at basically at a right angle with the back plate. It's a bit hard to get it on uh, on camera. I should give it a bit of a tap every now and again to make sure it's uh, going in. You just just eye it in. You you'll be able if you've got decent eyesight, you'll be able to see. 
All right, because I'm using a spanner on it. If I had to wind the nut, that's the way out. A bit more. And that's about it. That's that one lined up. Obviously, when the piston pulls it out, where's my thing? Make sure your adjusters are free. Like spin them around, make sure they're. Um, sorry, I'm in the way again. I'm concentrating on what I'm doing and not what I'm. Make sure it sits flush and. Not on anything. The only thing I'm concerned about is the, 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 the shoe seems to be resting on the, um, the adjuster. These, if you've got, um, if your adjusters are worn on the back, so you have to use a pair of mole grips on them, but perfectly fine, still got all the teeth on there, still functioning fine, you just have to use it with mole grips. I tend to leave them because they're still better than the aftermarket replacements you get today. Um, the, I've known them fall apart quite quite easily. Right, repeat the process on the other side. And uh, in fact, I'll throw this in now, quick. Right, spring on there. And on there. You slot it in, in, in that one and then you can lever it round. Well, that's the theory. That's it. Slot it in. On there. Pull that back, make sure it's actually gone into the pit groove on the piston. And that's it. That's your uh, brakes on. Obviously, adjust this uh, adjuster up and it'll. I'm trying to get it on an angle where you might be able to see and it'll push it out like that because that's that one's just the inner edge is just a little bit further back than the, than the outer edge so it literally just needs to come a couple of millimetres like that a lot of people overlook that that's why I'm making a point of it and uh, oh, they don't know what it's for and then they wonder why the brakes are rubbish and they put it down to the quality of the brake shoes rather than the fitment. Right, yeah, I'll get that done and then we'll get on to fitting the hub. Now it's time we've got the uh, the hub on. Um, make sure everything's had a good clean down, good wipe. Need to remember to put your rubber seal, greasy bearing up, and rubber seal in the back. Um, and grease up in between. Sorry, I get you in between where the um, in between the two bearings in the middle. Just get some grease. And just sort of you're not filling the cavity up as such. Just make sure there's a good smear of grease all around the in, all around the inside. Sorry, it's hard to hold this talk and. Uh, Pack it full of grease at the same time. Yeah, it's just a smear of grease around all, all in the inside of it. And uh, hopefully, make sure that's just going on square. Going on square. Hopefully, you don't trap your thumb like I just did. And it slots on. Check it's not catching any of your um, locking tabs or anything in the back of there. So just spin it, make sure you can't hear any grating noises or anything like that. Then you pack your front bearing with grease, the same as all the rest of the bearings.
and hopefully if you get it in straight, like I just didn't, it's hard to, it should just slide on you, there we go, it should just slide on like that. It's pretty much the same as the back, so I'm just wiping the threads to make sure they don't get too much grease on the threads. It's pretty much the same as doing the, in fact it's exactly the same as doing the back. Um, what you have then is this thick washer spacer with the um, with the tab that slots in the the slot on the uh, uh, shaft and get the axle nut, your bearing nut, whatever you want to call it. We're nearly done, we're nearly done. I know I said I want to try and keep this video as short as I can, but I always manage to epic fail that. Right. Thing is, like I said, you want to get as much detail in. Tighten that up, then slacken it off. You tighten it up to make sure it pushes everything back. And it doesn't want to be much more than hand tight. Just remember, a little nip there, a little nip. If you're spinning it and you feel it tighten up, then you've tightened it too far. But just remember, it isn't just, you're not just going to be able to go and it spins around. You've just packed it full of grease, and grease is, um, grease has quite a lot of resistance to it. So, right, then you uh, forget to get your locking washer off the workbench back. And right, I've got it. Yeah, your locking washer, not to be confused with the big thick spacer washer in the back of there, it's a lot skinnier. Um, but it's got the little tab on it. That goes on. The second uh, big nut goes on. Now this is one where you need to go a bit tighter. But when you're tightening it up, looking inside, making sure that nut inside is not spinning at the same time. That's it. Don't have to go full uh, Incredible Hulk on it. In fact, where's me? Uh, I've got another. Where's it gone? I'm not very organised yet again today. I've got a um, punch that I use for doing these. Found it. That one, big flat punch. If you're just using a screwdriver or a chisel or something, if, if you're just using a chisel or a screwdriver, you can ch chisel into the um, the washer or split the washer. So try and use something that's flat. And this does the job perfectly well. Because of the way it fits in there, between the um, the metal of the outside and the, and the nuts, it squashes it perfectly flat against the, the nut below. Right, let's give that side a little bit more of a knot. I've trapped my fingers in there now. <laughs> I've <laughs> trapped my fingers between there. Right. Then you need to do the, op the opposite side and peel one back onto this nut. This bar's probably a little bit excessive, but it'll do. Peel it around so far. Let's try and move it around so you can sort of see what I'm doing. I think you get the gist of it. Making sure that it's on one of the flats of the nut. Not on one of the one of the the uh, points. Once you've got it round so far, you can get it on the hammer. If uh, if you damage that. That uh, if you damage that big washer and split it, don't think you can cheat it and just go on another place. 
take it out, bin it, put a new one in. If you're ordering some, order a couple of spares, just to get, you've got them then. The next time you have to do a wheel bearing or something like that, you don't have to, you've got it in your toolbox. You don't have to mess around. Uh, a lot of decent wheel bearing kits come with new ones anyway, but you can't guarantee it. Um, what's next? Yeah, flange. Right, I'll get that flange and we'll put that on. This is simple enough. Make sure you wipe all your grease off. Bit of a, oh, it's got a lump of RTV on the end of it there. No, I just wipe that off. Bit of sealant around there. Put your gasket on. Like I said getting sealant into the into if it squirts inside there, it's not going to do it any harm. The main main reason why it does harm in engines is because it blocks oilways and stuff like that. Whereas obviously there's nothing in there to block up um, the bearings or just mix it in with the um, grease. So, right. Oh, I'm getting, I've got a bit of paint in the hole. Right, you need to be careful not to rip your um, rip your gasket. I haven't pushed it all the way up. Uh, that's, I haven't pushed it all the way up on the line. Try and turn it. Oh, come on, you bugger. There we go, too far. Line the hole up and then push it through. You don't want to. You don't want to tear your gasket. Right. Try and tighten these up evenly. Just gently tapping that one in. Just I've got a bit of paint in the hole. Get the right size socket. It might help. Right, I'll get all these tightened up. And all that's left now is put the brake drum on. You've got a nut on the end that goes on the end of there. In fact, I'll do that now. In fact, no, I won't because I've got to tighten that up. Right, I'll tighten these up and then come back. Right, we're on the home stretch now, guys. Next you need, once you get that spacer in there, and your castle nut. Which you can buy the proper spanner for, but that also does the job. the hole it's there then your o-ring that goes around there for your uh, cap to go on great draw before I do all this properly I'll go around and I'll break clean of these this is straight out of the packaging I will uh, break cleaning the drums up. Is that one adjusted all the way? Let's have a look. What size is that? Oh, I've got everything everywhere now. I can't find nothing. Oh, 13 mil for that is. Make 
sure it's uh, adjusted all the way in. Right, there we go. Grub screwing uh, in that hole there. Split pin in there. Job's done, you've rebuilt them. The idea, I think, behind, well, why I like to um, have a bit of resistance on there is obviously Land Rovers, they t as you're driving, they tend to wander about on the road a bit. If you've got a little bit of resistance in there, then uh, it doesn't tend to wander so much. Obviously, on a newer Defender or, or Discovery or whatever, they've got um, power steering and uh, and everything to to centre it, and they just they, they, they shouldn't wander about so much. But there we go. Right, right, yeah, that's it. Job done. You're um, other than adjusting your your brake shoes up, um, you you're pretty much good to go. Obviously, I haven't done the brake lines and stuff on this yet, but it's just a rolling chassis, so yeah. Now, next decision I've got to make is what wheels am I putting on it? And uh, what tyres? Yeah, I'll have a good think about that one and I'll see about getting some ordered. Um, and do I paint the drums? It, obviously, they, they're going to rust up, so. I like them shining like this, I might see if I can get some lacquer on them or something like that, but yeah. As always guys, thanks for watching, um, don't forget to like, subscribe, do all that lot, press the uh, notification button for more videos coming, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon, great stuff.